Okay, great. Uh, thank you all for joining us here today for this very exciting panel discussion where we'll be discussing the future of banking and how it's evolving at speed. So to give a little context, uh, modern banking is evolving exponentially to offer new levels of convenience, speed, and better tailored customer services and advice. This session will explore corporate innovation best practices being employed to evolve modern corporate banking for tomorrow's world, particularly through collaborations with tech startups and fintechs. Um, so I'm delighted and privileged to be uh, here with my esteemed panel. So I will quickly introduce everyone and their organizations. Uh, so we have Paul Taylor, CEO and founder of Thought Machine. Thought Machine is one of the UK's leading fintech companies and is undergoing a period of rapid expansion. Their mission is to cure one of banking industry's primary problems, its reliance on outdated IT infrastructure. And then also joined by Dr. Tim Sievers, who is CEO and founder of uh, Deposit Solutions. Deposit Solutions is a globally recognized fintech company and an open banking platform for deposits. Its proprietary open banking technology provides an infrastructure for the global 50 trillion deposit market that benefits banks and savers alike. And last but by far no least, we're here joined by Nadia Hijazi, Head of Digital and uh, Global Liquidity and Cash Management at HSBC. HSBC Holding is a British multinational investment bank and financial services holding company. It is the sixth largest bank in the world as of 2020 and is the largest in Europe. It holds assets of over $2 trillion uh, within four business groups, commercial banking, investment banking, retail banking, wealth management, and global private banking. And lastly, I'll introduce myself. My name is Babak, I'm director at Plug and Play ADGM. So Plug and Play is the most active VC in the world, particularly in the FinTech space, where we have legacy investments uh, and early investments in companies like PayPal, N26, Hippo, and Lending Club. We are one of the largest, uh, if not actually the largest corporate and government innovation platform in the world, supporting major private and public sector entities in their digital transformation strategies, tech sourcing and collaboration efforts, particularly with extraordinary startups and scale ups around the world. Um, so we have 42 offices worldwide, 11 health uh, uh, fintech hubs. And of course, in Abu Dhabi, this is our regional headquarter and one of our esteemed uh, fintech hubs. Um, and without further ado, I'd love to kick off with this exciting panel. So. First question, I'll pose it to the to the whole group. We'll start with Tim. So if each of you could give a quick 30 minute, one minute uh, high level of your core product and services, and uh, you know what's what, what you're looking to deliver through your organization. Of course. Hey, Babak, thanks for having me and thanks for the kind introduction. So as you say, we provide open banking or bring open banking to the product category of deposits. And uh, what does that mean? So deposits, obviously, um, are to save us simple savings products, uh, overnight accounts, fixed term uh, deposits or notice accounts. But to banks, uh, deposits are one of the most important funding uh, sources. Across Europe, for instance, about 40% of banks' balance sheets are funded through deposits. And in that space, what our platform does, so we provide an infrastructure, um, and what our platform does is it enables um, banks to integrate our offering into their own customer proposition and enable their own customers, uh, the savers, to use a um, range of third-party products through their existing relationship. So it transforms the user experience for uh, deposits into one of um, buying products and managing them in one place instead of the conventional way of doing this without us of opening up relationships and accounts with each individual product provider. Right? So this is really a game changer in the user experience. It also means that the point of sale, like the owner of the relationship, can service its own customers with these um, savings products really conveniently. And on the other hand, the deposit taking banks on our platform, they deepen and diversify their funding base by listing their products on our platform. They gain access to all these groups of captive customers. And on top of that, we also run our own proprietary direct uh, platforms where the products of our deposit taking banks are marketed directly to savers. We do that under our own retail brands, Zinspilot in Germany, which means interest rate navigator, and um, Savedo is our international brand. And most recently with our launch in the US, also savebetter.com uh, for our US um, for our US market. Very exciting, tackling big problems around the world. So if I may ask the same question of you, Paul, please tell us more. Uh, hello, everybody. So I'm Paul Taylor. So I'm founder and CEO of Thought Machine. 
It's a thought machine to fintech company based in London. And our goal is to provide next generation cloud native banking platforms to the world's banks. So all our customers are banks. Banks that have been encumbered by legacy IT technology for many decades, and it stopped them innovating and it's, and it's given them all sorts of problems and really left them far behind in the modern world. So we've got a completely cloud native platform and can serve any type of bank and just does all the core functions of a bank. It obviously uh, is the um, uh, store record for all the transactions in the bank and it runs all the products from mortgages, credit cards, savings accounts, currency accounts, and so on. Fantastic, thank you very much. Um, and I think both of you have extraordinary companies and extraordinary founders, but I think critical to, in order to sort of scale and deploy your solutions, you know, collaborations working with financial institutions is critical. Um, so with that, I'd like to uh, ask Nadia, uh, HSBC, of course, a very innovative bank, a global bank with a huge local presence as well over here in the MENA region. If you could tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, how do you approach innovation and collaborations working with startups? And also, how do you manage uh, risk? You know, some people, particularly in the region, look at you know collaborating with new tech companies and startups as potentially risky. But uh, HSBC have been doing it very well. So, if you could tell us a bit more about how you do this globally and locally, that would be great. Yeah, sure. So, I think that what we try to do, certainly with the fintechs, is really identify where they've really solved a problem really well that we would struggle to solve within a financial institution. Because if you look at financial institutions, we're heavily regulated. Um, the way that investment work tends to follow where investment has already been made. So where you're making money normally gets the budget to make more money. Um, and then you have this sort of the dynamic about, do you really want to build everything or do you want to go with one of these niche fintech players? Because whereas internally, it's very difficult to sell new ideas to, to, to the different people that sign off and give you money because they'll always have that heavy weighting on risk and what does it mean in terms of the short-term revenue. When you partner with a fintech, you can really leverage their ability to take a little bit more risk in the space and really bring to life a proposition that you would want to bring in internally, but you just can't get through all of the different regulatory things. I think what we look for in a fintech is someone that has an easy way for us to integrate in, because when you come into big financial institutions, we've all got what we call third party risk management processes. So we look for a fintech with a great idea that's solving a niche problem, one that is able to allow us to connect in an easy way. So what Paul was talking about, API connectivity, that means that it makes it easier to integrate into the legacy systems. Uh, a fintech that's got a good cyber around it, because clearly as a bank, you don't want to backdoor in through that great fintech solution that you provided, suddenly providing the cyber guys of, oh my gosh, there's a door that's open there. Um, and, and I think those things, as well as a cultural fit, are really what we look for um, in, in that. And at the top of our mind in any of the selection is what does the customer need? What is it that they need to succeed in their business? And then you pull all of those things together and you get, I think, what is a, what is a great formula to do that um, and to bring that together. And we've got some really great examples of where we've been able to kind of do that, where the fit has really worked well. You know, even when you don't necessarily partner with a fintech, but you do something with like WeChat in China, you're still integrating into your customer's ecosystem in a, in a different way. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, thank you for that detailed response. I think, you know, corporate innovation, especially within the financial services sector, uh, it's, it's, it's got many factors. You're looking at the regulatory, you're looking at the culture fit, the risk, uh, all, all different kinds. And this, of course, the technical integration elements. So, what I'd love to sort of, uh, Nadia, if I may further deep dive, and I'm also going to pull in the, the others on this. So it, it's such a, uh, often seen as a, such a complex process to let's say test and work with startups. And I would love to know sort of maybe an example of, um, you know, a story where you had maybe defined a, a, an opportunity and you started a, an engagement with a startup, uh, which may have started with a test and then an integration, how it may have grown and succeeded. Uh, because I think that journey would be, you know, an example like that is a journey that many in the audience hopefully may resonate with. Yeah, sure. So if I give you an example of a virtual assistant, so that's a really simple use case. Why would you build an, a virtual assistant internally? 
let's go get it from a fintech and let's integrate it into a system. So that's exactly what we did. We identified a small company that was doing really well in that space to partner with, to help us go along the journey and then evolve with them. Because I think the other thing that you look for in the fintech is their potential for the future and what the, you know, the, the level of the skill of the people in the organization and the strategy that they present on that. So we start with something as simple as the chatbot and the virtual assistant and start to then integrate it. Once we can show that we can do it in one place with one platform, we then look to scale. And I think the other thing that I would say with fintechs, it's all about your ability to scale because sometimes you go to them and they, they've got a great idea but when you put pressure on them to scale, they start to struggle because they're not built like that. So uh, I think with the virtual system, what we did was try it out with one market, with one platform, and then we scaled it across the bank, across all of the platforms that we provide. And it's been a lifesaver in COVID because it's obviously helping to answer the customer queries that we couldn't handle coming into the, the help desks. Amazing, amazing. I, I, I really like the, you know, I think many people that look at startups and scale ups and the opportunities that they have through corporate innovation, you know, it's not your typical vendor, which you procure a service for a certain period of time. It's often a long term partnership, white label solutions and evolving together. Um, so, uh, Tim, uh, maybe I'll start with you. I think uh, coming on to that point of long term collaboration and partnerships, you know, based on the success of your company, I'm sure you've had a lot of experience working hand in hand with financial institutions for some period of time. Uh, maybe you could share some, you know, insights and best practices, uh, how you, uh, your team and the partners that you've worked with in the financial services sector have, let's say, uh, you know, worked together in the short term, the long term and, and some best practices for the audience. Yeah, of course. So happy to. I mean, we're a B two B company at heart, and that's our DNA. So we've um, we've we know the challenges that Nadia has just pointed out from the other side, uh, the the perspective of the small fintech that tries to persuade banks uh, to trust in us and and work with us. And I think one of the um, challenges there, from the perspective of the institution, a regulated entity, a bank, uh, looking at the fintech is. Um, you know, I mean, compared to like many of our clients, even today, uh, we're a tiny company. We're probably one of the larger fintechs with 300 people and like we've been around for 10 years. But from the perspective of someone like HSBC or any other of these big guys, we are tiny. So um, can they, they have to ask themselves and satisfy themselves that they can trust our, um, the way we handle data, for instance, or the way we tr process um, the uh, parts of the um, of the value chain that that uh, you know that sort of fall into our domain and that cooperation, um, do our APIs work? Is the av availability um, such that they can um, that you know they they can trust in us um, building a user experience and all these things? So um, there are lots of questions, and as a I think as a fintech startup in particular, um, it's important to maybe and that's also i think different from maybe like the you know your regular e-commerce startup or so you have to invest really heavily in all those aspects of compliance um, it security documentation um, and all those um, all those sort of compliance and risk aspects uh, that are part of vendor onboarding but then also of the sort of corporation experience for the bank when you work with them and um, that's definitely something that I, we did. We had a time of uh, more than three years time to market, which is obviously terrible if you look at the cash flow profile of this type of business. But it's like building a platform which can then, and again, that's on the, the beauty of it, which can then scale because um, if you build it right and, um, and you can sort of uh, have low marginal costs and sort of do the extra processing on the basis of the same platform, then that's also with scale that becomes a good business model. Um, but obviously you have to sort of be willing and prepared to do the upfront investment and put in the legwork work at the beginning to convince the partners and then not just sort of to work with you initially, but also to recommend, recommend you and serve as a reference after. Thank you, Tim. I, I think it's very interesting The I'll just uh, actually before, uh, I'm just going to modify the question a little bit for Paul. The, on that same thinking about uh, long-term partnerships and, and best practices, you know, one of the things that uh, Tim, you've highlighted and, and Nadia touched on, it's almost like a chicken and egg situation. These, these tech companies and Tim, your organization, 300 plus people, it's not a startup really anymore. It's, a, you know, it's quite well established. 
it takes time to get to that point uh, to establish that credibility, that scale, which is often what finance institutions require to kind of even start these discussions. So Paul, maybe you could share maybe a bit of your story in terms of how did you and your organization build credibility to get your first customer to start scaling and growing, uh, which is critical for companies like yourself. That, that might be interesting to hear. Yeah, um, I think it's a very valid point. And I think anybody entering the B2B fintech space needs to pay attention of it. I mean, but, but you know, let's go, I mean, banking is the same as any business at heart. If you have something that the customer wants, um, that accelerates the conversation. So, and in Thought Machine's case, uh, we were solving a real problem and we were solving a problem that banks did not think they could solve themselves. It, it, so if you start, start at that point, which is basically, you know, it, it, if you can deploy it and if it works, um, uh, you know, do we have a do we have the basis of a partnership? Then you're on a you know you're off to a very strong start. So uh, so I basically start there. Um, I mean, we've had many uh, we've had many interesting stories and growing pains uh, with banks, but but the thing is the thing has made everything work is the bank's willing bank's willingness to uh, the bank acknowledgement of, of its legacy problems and the bank's willingness to actually. You know, engage properly, and it's been a. I think it's been a mutual and growing and learning experience that the banks have, in some sense, been teaching us uh, of all the detailed requirements and uh, you know and issues with uh, regulation and things like that. But we've also been telling the banks that uh, you can really accelerate your product development by uh, by orders of magnitude, uh, explaining how the cloud works, explaining that the cloud is a, a vastly more uh, scalable and safer and and solution, and and, and by both. Uh, both sides bringing things to the table, it's kind of grown into a, 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 a very, a very productive relationship. Um, and we've, um, so Thought Machine is, is, is nearly 500 people. And um, when we started, obviously we were, we were, it was just me, but the, uh, but I also think, you know, we have, you have to, you have to convince the banks that the number of people in the company is not the right metric. Uh, the number of people in the company is important, but what what matters is that the product really has the maturity to be able to do what uh, uh, what the bank wants. And of course, we bring some things quotes for free, as in uh, customer traffic, uh, volume, <coughs> resilience, and things like that. Are something that because we're cloud native are much much easier, much kind of cheaper to uh, uh, to handle than would be by a traditional approach. So we're we're not comparing uh, like by like on just sheer staff numbers. Fantastic. And um, Paul, I really liked uh, you also touched on the points where, you know, these organizations effectively need to at some point take a, a leap of faith in the companies when they're just getting started at the point which they need to scale. Uh, and ultimately, it's not about the number of staff that you have. It's the product. And it's the ability to integrate and work together in a collaborative way. Um, so what, I, what we'd love to do, you know, as a sort of conclusion question for everyone, uh, the future of fintech and collaboration with corporations and financial institutions, you know, it, it's only going to keep accelerating. I think a recent McKinsey study showed that in the last eight weeks of uh, COVID-19, we've seen digital transformation accelerate five years ahead. So what I'd love to hear, maybe we'll start with Nadia and, and then Paul and then Tim, uh, where do you feel is the future of uh, fintech? How is it changing in COVID-19 times? Uh, and uh, you know, respectful of businesses, and especially around corporate innovation uh, with you, Nadia. How do you feel that your learning curve is evolving, and uh, how's the future looking in the next year or so? so I think the big advantage for COVID for the banks is it's cleared a lot of red tape that we were furiously tied up with because it's identified that we need to move very, very quickly. Um, and to be able to move very, very quickly, we need the right partnerships to do that because, as Paul said, sometimes with the legacy systems, it's really difficult to build that within the organisation. So COVID has been a great accelerator in really driving that kind of acceleration with the bank to bring stuff to market really, really quickly, um, provided that we can continue at this rate. I think that the partnership between a fintech and a bank is probably going to just, as you said, strengthen and strengthen. Because for, in my opinion, they're able to innovate a lot quicker and better than we are within the banks. And what I really like about a lot of the fintechs is they really are solving some new issues that honestly, the amount of investment that we have in the bank to solve them wouldn't be worth our, wouldn't be worth our while. So you do really end up in that kind of win-win situation. Fantastic. 
Everyone, I think we're very, very short on time, about 30 seconds to go. Um, so Tim, so sorry, I couldn't add you to the question, but first I'd like to thank, of course, our esteemed panel for their interesting and very insightful uh, thoughts and comments. Uh, I'd like to thank the audience for joining us here today. Um, very bright future ahead for FinTech and collaborations with corporations. Um, thank you very much.